Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. So we had a couple projects that we were working on. We uh, started filtering out some of this oxygen or this, these gases in here. Um, we also need to, um, well, we also started making our food less chlorinated. I think we have enough chlorine in here now that it is a okay to just leave it as is yeah our water comes in at 214,000 food poisoning and it leaves at 185 which is just going down all the time so i think we can go ahead and deconstruct here on our ventilation gas pipes we can deconstruct this pipe so it's still just going to go ahead and um allow us to continue to hold on to the gases, but it's no longer gonna be pumping it into our base. Of course, we don't want chlorine getting everywhere, and then the other one was hydrogen, so that way we could get our Drecos to hopefully start uh, making glossy Drecklet eggs, as well as regrow their current um, fur, so that way we can still continue to get a reed fiber from them. So the next thing that we're going to be focusing on is uh, getting our exosuits up and running. So if we go here, uh, we can see that we are not producing a lot of oxygen, certainly not enough to actually fill up the exosuits, I don't think. Um, but we're just gonna get the infrastructure up and running for that when we do get enough resources for it. So another cool thing is that we can start making sage hatchling eggs um, occur more frequently by changing this from sandstone into dirt and dirt. So what we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and sweep everything in here so that way there's only dirt coming through. And same with this, we want dirt and dirt and no sandstone. And then we will also start sweeping that and the reason we want to start feeding them dirt is because uh because sage is a sage hatchlings are a great way to get your first um refined metals without necessarily have you basically turn dirt into lead i believe and yeah, that's a great transfer because that's going to be a refined metal already. So you don't have to put in the um, like battery power to make refined metals because you'll just have some some cute little sage hatches. So I decided to go ahead and build ourselves another um, water reserve, and this is going to be for all the water coming out. We'll also go ahead and make this room chlorinated. Um, so it's gonna be chlorinated, but it'll be polluted water, and then that'll run through uh, to the water sieve, and eventually we'll have this all just connected. Um, hopefully, that'll go well. <laughs> I think this will all work out. I don't know if killing the germs here, even though it's polluted water, is gonna make um, that much of a difference, but hopefully, hopefully that's correct. I don't know. I'm not sure. Cause this turns, produces clean water from polluted water using sand. So I don't know if that's just gonna keep it if this is just, there's no point in doing this, but you know, worst case scenario, we try and then we just are collecting the polluted water and not having like a nasty polluted water tank all the way down here, <laughs> which doesn't seem like a terrible situation, honestly, because all this polluted water is off gassing polluted air. So that's not, that's not good. I think I just drowned this Draco. I hit Wrangle because I don't know why he's not getting into Somebody come pick him up, please. 
Okay, good. I was like, he is drowning for no reason. Okay, they made <laughs> Ruby here is going to let him survive amazingly. All right, and hopefully this time he's actually going to be dropped off with his buddies. And then I wonder if they'll be able to actually eat these without them getting harvested. That guy just ate. I guess we'll keep our eye on that. I also decided to go ahead and build a carbon skimmer down here um, because our carbon dioxide's getting to 918. Um, obviously, I don't want their ears to pop and I would love for this to stay as compact as possible, but just because we have a carbon skimmer does not mean that we have to turn it on, you know? So it should be okay for now, I guess. And already these are working as this water's just sitting in here. Um, <laughs> we're down to 176. So the germs getting removed from there is working successfully. Blessed. Okay. <laughs> So I just looked it up. So we actually want smooth hatches, which means we want them to be eating sedimentary rock, um, which I'm not sure we have any, honestly. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit sedimentary rock on this. It says that we don't have any, but for now, we'll just do that one. Uh, they can still eat dirt. And then we just have to look out for sedimentary rock. So it looks like this next biome that we're headed towards um, does have some sedimentary rock in it. Uh, okay, and let's check the temperature over here. It's hot, that is for sure, but not as hot as this biome, so that's reassuring. Um, let's check salt, sand. I think the best way to do this is to just um, cut straight through here. I think pretty sure I have somebody who's capable of um, getting through abyssalite. But it just kind of goes to show that uh, <laughs> it, it always helps to look things up. And we do want to go ahead and get these exosuits up and running as soon as possible. So since we aren't exactly ready for exosuits quite yet, I decided to go ahead and build an oxygen mask. Um, station. I'm hoping that that'll at least let them breathe enough to really get into the trenches down here as they're exploring and hopefully our drecklets here will start producing um, some nice uh, some nice drecklets uh, some nice glossy drecklet eggs so that way we can start producing some uh, wonderful plastic here soon. And let's make sure we have a directlet egg on here. Oh, we already have sedimentary rock? Well, that's good, I guess. Uh, then let's go ahead and uh, sweep up this dirt. So that way that's out of there. So that way hopefully here they'll start making some stone hatches um, in the next couple generations. And I actually go ahead, think it's okay to go ahead and start disabling that building. Um, it won't really matter what gases are where, we can always turn that back on later, especially as we're coming into this new kind of biome, this uh, salty, salty biome. I don't know if that's a thing. Um, so yeah, it should be, it should be fine and it should be good. Turn that off. So hopefully they can start uh, focusing on getting this stuff all set and ready. Our germs are continuing to go down as they sit in this chlorine room for longer and longer. And I'm hoping if we start de-germing them at this stage, uh, it'll hopefully go by all right, honestly. Ooh, our first oxygen dock. Clearance always permitted. Awaiting delivery, not configured. Deliver suits. Do we need to have a suit station? <laughs> um, okay. So we need 200 kilograms of um, refined metal. 
Okay, so it takes 100 kilograms to make 50, so we need four. So that'll make 200 refined iron, which should be fine. We have zero iron ore. Okay. We have iron ore right there. Okay, that's fine. So with that, we'll be able to make the textile loom to deliver a suit. Just says suit. At a crafting table. Crafting station. So what do we need? We need a crafting station, but in order to do that, we need copper ore or iron ore. And it says we have zero iron ore, but I know we do have iron ore, like, somewhere. Look at all this iron ore down here. See, we got some somewhere. <laughs> so we'll just go ahead and put a priority eight sweep on that because we need the iron ore um, for this as well. Okay, now we actually have um, <laughs> those resources. We can go ahead and build a crafting station. Um, might as well just build it right here really quick since it's already hooked up to the wires. We don't have to waste any more copper or anything like that trying to get wires over there. Um, fantastic, we love to see it. Great job, great job team. I love to see the hustle. Okay, so once this crafting station is up and running, the, the reason why is because this building was enabled as soon as they built this first couple things here, uh, which we didn't necessarily want, but now they're able to actually uh, get over here, get all the resources outside of the base that we had already previously dug up. So now that our crafting station is up, let's do... Let's do two iron masks. Sounds heavy, but whatever, that's fine. Okay. And with that, hopefully we'll be able to build two of those and then just have them delivered here. All right, well, I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave this episode here. Uh, kind of re recap, uh, we have our oxygen mask stations up and running, and this will just help them traverse through these kind of like icky areas so that way they can actually dig and break into other biomes around the map without um, having to find oxygen as often. We started collecting our polluted water as well as our clean water, which is slowly going down in germs. It's about 10,000 germs less every cycle, which is amazing. Soon, hopefully, we'll have germ-free water without any food poisoning in it. What a crazy concept. We have our Drekas up here in their little Dreco farm. They're producing reed fiber for us as well as phosphorus. And slowly but surely, we are increasing our chances of getting the glossy drecklet eggs by having them eat mealwood lice. We also have our little tiny ranch down here of hatches, which are slowly going to turn into stone hatchling eggs, which we then can turn into smooth hatches, which is a great way to make refined metal because they produce lead as they consume um, whatever it is that they consume. So we are having the laid, laid out some long-term projects that will eventually get um, in a pretty good spot. Uh, but we definitely want to get our plastics up and running. We can do that a couple ways, not only with glossy drecklets, um, but as we go further and further down, we will come across some oil biomes um, and that'll help move everything along a lot faster. So like I said, I am going to go ahead and leave this episode here. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, there is a link down in the description that has all of um, my internet things that I do. I have a TikTok. I have a Patreon where you can get early access to the videos that I make as well as my sticker shop. But if you'd like to support me for free, I'd really appreciate that. All you have to do is like, comment, and share this video. All of that really helps the YouTube algorithm get my content in front of more people's faces. So until I see you guys again, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.